go. Well, this is Royal. Welcome. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. So uh, I know very little about, uh, but uh, I saw one of the devices which is called Rive device, and uh, it looked like a plasma globe and uh, shoot out some frequencies. It uh, uh, kind of um, was uh, glowing in the dark. Yes. There are so many different kinds of energy. So I wonder. Yes. Uh -huh. Go ahead. I just wonder about your history, about your story, and about devices. Well, I, it was an innocent start. I feel like uh, I knew that uh, there had been some evidence that magnetic energies, the magnetic pulse and wave helped with pain relief. So that's where I started. I started with the electromagnetic thought process that it could help with pain relief and indeed it but what it I, I decided to work with other kinds of energies as well and I had to do a lot of research on what kind of energies was a, were available to work with in the universe and in my studies and how to uh, bring those energies into one place uh, to see what they could do. So that's what the thought about that was to uh, capture energy and make it useful for healing purposes for the most part. But in doing so, as I discovered, uh, collecting energies in certain ways, I, I studied the those that worked with energies before. So I discovered how to main, contain certain energies and finding that, discovered that they all could affect, affect the body in one way or another. Every energy affected the body a little differently over exposed time. Is this what they have written about me? It's not that they're written, but I agree with you from my uh, from my uh, reason. Yes, I see. So therefore, what got me in trouble was that they really discovered that certain energies a spoke to the brain, b spoke to the DNA more strongly than others, and uh, c could, there are some combinations that could connect the brain and the DNA so that they could uh, be more productive together. It was at first a very mild influence, meaning that I, I suspected that there were some influences happening in the brain because I was using it on myself. I felt uh, very safe using these kind of energies because we're exposed to these kinds of energies all the time. They're in the universe. They're not strange, unusual energies, but I used them in different uh, sequences of movement and energy, energies and different power degrees. And yes, there was... Uh, one sort of energy clarifies the mind and one other kind of energy uh, speaks to the DNA a little bit stronger than the other. But you couldn't prove, I couldn't prove it. Uh, so I st had to develop some experiments to see what I could find, what was actually happening. Like uh, daily, I would expose myself to a certain kind of energy and then see what kinds of, uh, write a diary on how they are affecting me within the next several days. 
uh, I would do the same energy for say 10 or 15 days and the, and we'll see what the results of that if I if the, any changes came to my thought processes any influences on my physiology etc that was a very early portion but it, it is what caused me to expand my thought process because I could note that there was a clarity of mind that I could actually move better my my joints didn't hurt as much my aches and pains were less in some ways so but there was combinations of energies as well so it was a root but from the result of these real basic tests i decided to create some uh, bigger tests with greater energies so uh, please ask some questions. Uh, one one thing which doesn't uh, uh, which causes uh, my concern is that uh, I think uh, your uh, research was stopped before, or it was arrested before the discovery of the DNA and the understanding of DNA. Yes. Uh, yes, absolutely. I, so, it was that was a harder. That yes, the DNA was harder to detect because DNA works in a slow process compared to some of the other, you know, uh, nervous system and pain system and brain and things of that nature. When you're dealing with the DNA, you're dealing with uh, a slower uh, system. It doesn't immediately respond sometimes but it sends out um slower signals but we were able to speed that up to be able to get within weeks uh, that it would show within weeks how uh, that it was changing and that there was improvements so um tell me why the uh, so who, who was behind uh, stopping your research and why do they care to keep to keep uh, arresting your devices even now, because um, you were correct in saying that there was some mind control evidence. Certain energies with chemicals, and uh, you see, I added some chemical research to this as well, because um, chemicals can be a catalyst uh, for energy uh, absorption and I so I used that just for to see if the the energy would absorb in a greater way into certain areas of the brain and things of that nature I didn't use myself for those experiments but uh, more animal research uh, animals and I could I saw initially that there was an expanded uh, thought process in some of these animals, they, they became more intelligent and it, and I could actually teach them in some ways much faster, but this was a later discovery, of course, but that is where, I, what got me in trouble is because if you transfer, it, it could be transferred to human, uh, human uh, beings and people could learn faster people could actually open up areas of thought process that were not open to them before uh, telekinesis was uh, touched on I, I'll just say touched on because one person or uh, that they used it on developed telekinesis and um, but they saw that it was uh, very powerful. They saw that what was happening was very, very powerful. And I was starting to test on humans at that time because it was safe. This, the, the chemicals that I was using were safe and, um, and they were common. So was it a combination of chemicals with uh, with the electromagnetic device? Yes. 
you see certain chemicals that were working with the energies made it absorb faster. So it chemical absorption, chemical helped the energy absorb faster and made it work in a different way when they work together. Does that make sense to you? Yes, but uh, I just don't know anything about it. So I wonder if, uh, where should I start learning about it? Well, they don't have, the records have been sealed. Um, but the thing is about that is it was very effective. And they took my information and advanced it a hundredfold. But I was arrested because I, they said that I was illegally experimenting on humans, that it was un, unethical and things of this nature. And I, there was no harm being done. But they were saying that I was harming by, ex by expanding people's thought processes, I was actually harming them. That's not true. Who, who was working with you? What was your um, environment? Well, at that time, I had a couple assistants. Once I discovered, or, or once I had the ideas uh, for creating pain relief devices, I, I got some people to help me uh, make the models for them and to help me to uh, distribute the en uh, show me how to distribute the energy a little better. And these people were very helpful. So I I'm actually not permitted to discuss uh, a lot of things about this, but I can now. But um, that is what I, I did, yes. Um, so what's, once you passed over on the, to the, the other side, what did you learn more? Uh, what is your um, outlook? What, where should you go now? Well, I see that they're using it for um, mind control. They have learned to use mind control, but they also have learned to train the uh, DNA to make superhumans in the sense that uh, they tell the DNA to produce a bigger muscle mass, they produce a bigger a brain mass, and if they start at a younger age with uh, men in their late teens or even younger, they can create some very impressive humans with higher IQs and greater density. And uh, it, it's an incredible use for it. But they do have some of these uh, people there that they use on their missions. And these these people have, they've changed their names and identities. They were orphans at one point or someone that was given up or even stolen children uh, that they use. Is it secret space program or is it some other program? No, no, no. The, no this is not the secret space route program. This is the military. The military has uh, done this. They have unlimited funds, really. They can do whatever they wish. Um, you might think they ha that the military has just so much money to work with, but they are given whatever they want. So I have a, a moral dilemma. Uh, I have some good ideas about the topic we are discussing, but uh, would it be advisable from your perspective, would it be advisable to offer these ideas to military so they would fund my uh, academic research? The thing is, they already have uh, a lot of information that uh, about some of your ideas, but you might take it in a different direction, and that would be something that they would be looking for. 
They're looking always for expansion because always, you're going to find always, there's always some point where they, have, where they can't get beyond. They can't find a way to do this. They don't know the brain well enough or DNA well enough to be able to do all the things they want to do. So they are always looking for that expanded understanding of DNA and the brain. Now, there are certain parts of the brain that they are more interested than, in than others. The, of course, expanded uh, cerebral cortex, front, frontal lobe, and, oh, I forget the name of that area, that is in charge of the psychic portion of the brain. It has a weird name, but um, I did, I was working with all parts of the brain, the medulla oblongata as well. And, and, um, and uh, it, it's, it is that these energies, this, uh, these energies open up uh, different areas and the brain uses all kinds of energy and it may not use it in great amounts but if you increase those amounts it changes how the brain reacts and if you directly input energy first of all i put the chemical in if you would directly input the energy with the chemical you get very interesting responses and that's why they were they took that research information my question um, remains, um, would it be immoral for me to offer them uh, my services? You know, I, it, it really depends how, how bad these guys are. If they are evil, then of course it would be like very immoral. But on the other well, hand, if they are not that evil, then maybe it's, it's, it's appropriate. It all goes by your intention. Are you intending to be evil? I don't think so. So your intentions are what is important. What they do with what you discover is really not is really not your intention. The thing is, you must go by what you feel is right. If you feel that this, this is fine because it can also help humanity, then that move forward with your positive intentions because it may also help people. Uh, like stem cells research helps humans to heal in many places, the brain has areas that can actually heal itself. That's right. Uh, I, I'm looking at Einstein. He discovered his, uh, his, uh, um, uh, his formula, uh, his formula about maybe around 1920. But yeah. he lived long enough to see it misused for for uh, uh, for nuclear weapons, and actually he was he he had to, he had to choose. I mean, he was uh, one of the main uh, instruments to convert his invention to discovery to the to the uh, nuclear weapons. He was basically the one who uh, wrote a letter to the president suggesting that project has to be started. And then he was, he saw it used and then misused. Yeah. So, so, I mean, that's, that's a tough position to be in. And I'm sure he was, uh, he was uh, feeling the, on both sides that it was important for humanity to learn it, but then that humanity misused it. And he was basically partly responsible for that. Well, the thing is, what is your intention? If they put you in a place where you have to decide on moral consequences, then you must decide. You can, if you feel that it's not right for them to do what they are doing, it is, and they, they will steal it rather than get your permission anyway. But um, the thing is, your, your intention is important. And if, they, if you let them know that you, what your intentions are, they may take the information and use it in a negative way, but you can also use the information in positive ways. Without the information, many positive things would not occur. 
this information that Einstein was was um, responsible for uh, discovering or uncovering also did many positive things and and it was necessary for it to be discovered for the furtherment of mankind in many ways. So because it was also used in a negative way does not make him fully and totally responsible for that, but his intention was positive for at least at the beginning. No, his intention was positive all the time. I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely sure. Yeah. Um, and you were in the same situation. I think um, they uh, they uh, uh, arrested your laboratory maybe around middle 40s and uh, you lived to 71. So in another 15, 20 years, you were um, looking at that from, uh, from outside. So why didn't you collaborate with them? Why didn't you offer them your services? Because what they were doing was in, ir immoral, yes. What they were doing was against what I was standing for. I wanted healing. I was looking for healing and for furtherment of positive results in the body. The chemicals and the energy were helping the body to regenerate at a greater rate than they had been before. This is, was something that was really amazing to me, that the energy with the chemicals could help uh, regeneration. This is where I was at. There, the thing is, they took it and wanted to use it for mind control and for genetic enhancement for negative person, purposes. That I could not be a part of. And so if you didn't, uh, didn't want to collaborate with them, why would you recommend that I do? I, because you're, you do not see any negative responses yet. If there's positivity that can be done, do it. I, I did what I could for positivity. But you see, I was arrested because I would not help them and I would not give them more ideas. And they really didn't want to kill me in case I changed my mind. I would be a, a, a perfect uh, scientist for it because I knew more about it. So they threatened my life, but they, they felt that it wasn't necessary or they shouldn't do it because if I changed my mind, I would be helpful to them but i did not are you are you um uh, what do you think that the project this military project evolved from a negative to a more positive side well yes in some ways i do because what they attempted to do didn't always didn't work a hundred percent uh the the physical enhancements did work for a while, but they, are, but they did not do them in a way that was safe for the individual. And so uh, the physical deterioration happened much quicker because they were uh, spending too much energy on muscle development and brain development. The energy was not equalized with the person, and so as the person grew older, uh, they they deteriorated much in a much faster way. So they only had uh, these people for a short amount of time. They deteriorated very quickly. Now, with a balance uh, that would match their body energy and usefulness and health and vibration, they could have done a much better job of enhancing these people and they would have lived to greater ages and not deteriorated so quickly. But they spoke to the DNA in a way that 
hurry the DNA, which means that as the DNA uh, uh, was sped up, it also sped up their lifespan. I fully understand. I think that's uh, a major concern that when you do enhancement on one side, you possibly lose the balance on the other side. Correct. Like, like when we do our, our uh, Reiki healing and especially acupuncture and traditional Chinese and uh, Ayurvedic healing, we always uh, look for a balance, not for uh, enhancement of anything, but for a balance. Exactly. And they did not do that correctly. And I would not help them with it. They wanted to find a greater balance. Their scientists were, were uh, actually put under a great deal of pressure to develop a superhuman. And so as they did that with the information they had, they took the uh, human body out of balance completely and the brain. And also they, with these, with the deterioration of the brain came a lot of violence and um, that was a problem. Um, I was also, I'm looking at uh, Jewish culture and German culture. Uh, these cultures are quite different. And in German culture, they sort of have a, an amazing capacity of uh, working together collectively and actually creating structures and making a plan and following the plan. Yes. But they seem to have to be disbalancing, uh, disbalancing in some way the energy flow. So they they make uh, people more mental and less uh, intuitive in some ways. Yes. And, and in Jewish culture, it's, 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 it's also disbalanced, but in a very different way. And, and I wonder why did uh, Germans, German fascists try to destroy the, the Jews as, as, a, as, a, as a genetic uh, design? What was the... the I feel it's, it's very much connected to electromagnetics, but I'm not sure why. Well, the, they saw that the Jewish culture had great liter, leadership potential and great thought processes. The Jewish culture is actually very intellectual in many senses and has an edge on some thought processes about management and control. This is something that they wanted to alleviate so that there could not be any backlash of of uh, power struggles. They also saw that they, their wealth was uh, something that they could use. So in eliminating the leadership ability and then acquiring their wealth, they could benefit more than one way. So oh, you don't see here an alien connection or electromagnetic connection? There is some, but the major connections were third dimensional because that's where their heads were mainly at at that time when they first started this whole thing, when they first started the whole thing. But um, I have to say that there was some alien influences that came into it afterwards but still, they saw that they could benefit by getting rid of that, uh, the ethnically cleansing them out and taking their wealth. I got it. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I want to invite the next speaker, which uh, I don't know if you met X3, uh, and, uh, uh, an expert in alien medicine. Uh, and uh, if you want to say anything before closing, you're welcome. Yes. I know who X3 is, and he was involved in energy healing as well. He was actually, I made myself aware of him because his ideas and my ideas had some overlap. Um, he, he was more en energetically based than, it, than he was uh, chemically based, but he saw that the chemical element was also necessary for enhancement at some points. But his energy uh, sources were much different than mine, and they were actually much stronger 
in the sense that um, he was bringing alien influence of certain energies that weren't really well known to humanity and adding a technological edge to them along with the chemical edge. So he actually was even far more advanced than I was. Yeah, thank you for introduction. Um, you can pass the microphone whenever you like. And oh. thank you for the interview. It was very interesting to, to meet you uh, in such capacity. Thank you. I hope that it was um, acceptable. Absolutely. I will bring um, X3, which is his code name actually, to you. Thank you. Have a good day. Have a good day. Thank you.